All right guys, what I wanna go over today is a couple things. One, proper evacuation. Two, I came across something. Um, not sure if everybody's familiar, Johnstone sometimes has these blowout cells where they have items on the shelf that have been sitting around for a while and they get heavily discounted. I'm not gonna say how much of a deal they made with me on this, but I was checking all their locations out and my Johnstone rep um, worked the deal with me on it, brought it down even further. And what it is is, the JB battery powered vacuum pump. Never used one before. I'm curious how it's gonna do, and you guys are gonna see it. I have opened the box already, but I just did fill oil. Now I will say, I am not sponsored by JB. I'm not sponsored by John Stone. I just figured I'd throw out there, TJ, thanks for hooking it up. But I will say, number one, JB. This pump, retails around $1,100 before taxes. It's not what I paid, but it retails for about $1,100 before taxes. I would expect perfection 100% out of the box with $1,100 when you can go buy a regular vacuum pump for, I mean, ranging anywhere from 300 to $800 for like super fancy ones, you know? But when I opened this up earlier to kind of just check it out, you know, one thing that pissed me off was I filled it up with oil, walked away from my truck, came back to oil all over the tailgate of my truck. The face bolts, I got two turns out of most of them and then a couple of them a turn and a half before hitting hit any resistance to tighten the face of the pump up. And I'll show you guys what I was talking about, but I'm gonna pull the stuff out of the box now so you can see. Um, once again, I'm not affiliated with JB. I'm not affiliated with John Stone. It's just, I give a shout out to TJ for hooking it up. All right. So this is the JB Platinum Flex AC battery power. Like I said, I already opened the box, put oil in it, but I'm gonna pull stuff out so everybody can see. Get this out of here, it's packed well, but we'll get to the meat and potatoes. So it comes with a charger, and I don't know if anybody realizes this, but what does this charger look like? I'll show you guys something funny that I realized about this vacuum pump. So it comes with a charger. Looks almost identical to the original M18 Milwaukee charger, right? Put that to the side. <clears throat> then it comes with battery. What does everybody notice? Looks almost identical to a Milwaukee battery. I'm gonna grab one real quick so everybody can see. Pretty funny, huh? Almost identical. Um, the only know differences I noticed is this has this little tab right here and this has a tab right here. And we'll see if a Milwaukee battery will work on this. <clears throat> then we get to the pump. All right. So there's the pump. Move this box out of the way. So, here's this uh, pump that seems to be worth $1,100 retail. You got your half, your three-eighths, and your quarter fitting on here. Um, like I said, I already filled it up with oil, but it leaked out these little um, faceplate bolts that seal this face gasket. Every single one, I got at least two turns before I hit resistance. And this one, I got a turn and a half before I hit resistance. This one was two turns. The two bottom ones were two turns. This one was two turns. But I filled it up with oil, walked away, came back, and all the oil leaked out onto my tailgate. Kind of upset me a little bit. So JB, quality control. Already not where I want it for an $1,100 pump. 
So everything else seems about the same. We'll weigh it and see what it weighs with the battery and we'll see how much it is. So let's go ahead and weigh this so everybody can see. I zeroed it out. Don't make fun of this scale. I've had this scale for, I know over 10 years at least. Still works. I just pulled this out of my garage, put a battery in it. Let's see how much this thing weighs. So with the oil in it and with the battery on it, 27 pounds, 8.25 ounces. All right. I mean, is that a light pump? The Navac battery powered pump is lighter than this one, but it's also only a three CFM. But with that also being said, I haven't used a Navac pump. This is my first time actually using one of these battery powered vacuum pumps. And we're gonna test it out and I'll show you what we're testing it out on. Um, overall, the way it sits, it looks just like any other JB pump that I've had. I have several JB pumps. Um, they're the pump that I prefer. I do have uh, the first field piece 8 CFM pump that had the quick oil change on it. It's an okay pump, but it's a lot bigger and bulkier than most vacuum pumps. I just think that in a commercial setting, those uh, field piece pumps are not the greatest. And a residential setting, yeah, sure, they're great, they're good, but we're gonna get this thing operating and we're gonna use it on a piece of coiled up copper that I pressurized with compressed air to make it even worse. So let's go ahead and throw it on there. All right, so what I have here is a piece of 5 eighths copper. This is about, I wanna say 30 feet. Um, this was sitting out in the elements and to make things even worse, I soldered on some uh, saddle valves and pressurized it with compressed air to make it even harder for this pump to pull a vacuum. <clears throat> but I am gonna compare whether this pump pulls, and this is kind of going into the evacuation process. I'm gonna compare pulling through a hose like we're supposed to and no manifold and pulling through a manifold with this pump and see how long each time it takes. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you, I did pressurize this to make sure that my welds held and I didn't flow nitrogen when I soldered the ends, didn't flow nitrogen when I put these saddle taps on, but I put about 60 PSI of nitrogen into this thing. Let's pull this core out. Sorry, not 60 PSI of nitrogen, but 60 PSI of compressed air. All right, we got that out of there. <clears throat> I'm gonna put my micron gauge on this end so that way it can be seen a little bit better. And I'm gonna bend this up so the camera can see it with the micron gauge. And I'm gonna pull the core out of this end for our vacuum pump. This is how we're really supposed to be pulling vacuum, guys is pulling the core through a core removal tool. Oh. Didn't ca quite catch on. All right. So we pull our cores to the core removal tool and we would put either a micron gauge here, but I'm gonna put it on the furthest point away to do a true micron test on this. And I have a half inch hose with a three eighths end and a quarter inch end and that's what we're gonna pull through. Once again, I am not sponsored or affiliated with JB, but this is JB's half inch vacuum hose. All right. So we got that on there. Let's throw our micron gauge on here.
This is my first ever digital micron gauge that I bought. Let you guys see this thing as soon as it comes on. We're gonna go to microns. This is why you don't let technicians borrow your stuff. They don't take nice care of it. Someone obviously that was last borrowing this cracked the lens cover on that. <clears throat> so I'm gonna turn this up a little bit higher so everybody can see, get a better view on the camera. All right, get a stopwatch going so we can see how long this thing takes to get down to 500 microns. Don't forget, I didn't purge nitrogen through this. This uh, roll of copper has been sitting in the elements for God knows how long. You can see how it's discolored. And I didn't flow nitrogen soldering all this stuff up. I did pressure test it. So let's go to stopwatch. And to turn this pump on, there's a little button on this side. You hold it down. See how long this takes. All right, we're already in a <clears throat> 29 inches of vacuum. Now we're reading the micron scale. So it took three minutes and 28 seconds 
to pull down the 500 microns. I valved it off, turned the pump off, and doing a decay test. And it's not bad. I am gonna go ahead and pressurize this pipe again with compressed air that's wet, not dry, and hook up a manifold, not pull the cores, and we'll see how long it takes. Because let's be honest, guys, most of us don't pull the cores and do proper evacuation, right? We just use our manifold and we keep the cores in, we're pulling a vacuum, calling up our boss going, oh, this something's wrong, this vacuum's taking forever, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and go grab a set of gauges <clears throat> and we'll test it out and hook it up and see how it does. All right, so this time I'm gonna pull through my manifold. I'm gonna have my quarter inch hoses with the Schrader cores on there, micron gauge, and just so everybody knows, I pressurized the pipe again with compressed air to simulate a technician that's not purging with nitrogen or pressure testing with nitrogen. And it goes, my, my welds are solid. I don't need to pressure test. I'm just gonna pull a vacuum. We're pulling through a manifold this time. I'm gonna relieve the pressure out of this line. And I'm gonna hook it up to the vacuum pump. And we're gonna see how long this takes pulling through the manifold. Now I'll show you how long it took without the manifold on just a single hose. So we were at three minutes and 28 seconds. We'll give it three minutes, 29 seconds because hey, we're almost there, right? So we're gonna hit lap and we're going to start over again. Reset. All right, as soon as I start this pump, I'm gonna start this timer. We're gonna turn our micron gauge back on. There we go.
So I want to point something out. <clears throat> it took us five minutes and five seconds to get down to 500, right? So now I valved off and isolated the manifold and doing a decay test. And look, we were not at 500 microns. So let's see how long it takes us to get down to 300 microns to get this actually at a better location. So let's see how long it's gonna to take to get down to 300 and see if we can not raise up past that 500 mark. So I'm gonna start the pump up, then open the manifold. And as soon as I open the manifold, I will start the timer. Timer starting. I'm going to go ahead and stop it there. Closing off my manifold. Stop. So another 2 minutes and 19 seconds to get down pretty close to 300 microns. Let's see where uh, our decay winds up at. You gotta remember, this micron gauge is reading closer to the pump. Before, we had it reading furthest away from the pump and it took less time to pull down to 500. And it held below 500, didn't rise, none of that. This is slowly rising. I mean, it could be some minimal leakage through my hoses, whatever it be. But when we had directly to the cores, this had no rise, no leaks. We just valved it off at the vacuum rated core removal tool and there was no more issues. So it looks like we're gonna stabilize about 530 microns on a decay test. Oh, we're going up still. But this is my point of, we need to be pulling vacuums properly. And not to mention that, but also purging with nitrogen and flowing with nitrogen and we wouldn't have these issues. We had one hose on this piece of pipe and we pulled the vacuum not only faster, but deeper and it didn't rise on a decay test. And the micron gauge was on the furthest point away from the vacuum pump, which proves that the manifold, pulling a vacuum to a manifold is not the way to do it. So even if I valved off these ball valves, which look, they made it 
these ball valves introduced air into the system. These ball valves obviously aren't vacuum rated for when they're closed. So, um, like I said, we shouldn't be pulling vacuums through our manifolds. We should be pulling vacuums through a dedicated hose that we don't put any refrigerant or oil or any kind of contaminant through it. I'm not gonna say what brand is the best. I'm just saying this is what I tested with was a JB half inch hose with a three eighths end and a quarter inch end. So we're gonna go ahead and stop this. So let's get in the meat and potatoes of this pump. Put this to the down. I'm gonna take this battery off. Like I was saying before, this battery is pretty similar to a Milwaukee M18 battery. It's an 18 volt battery. The Milwaukee M18 batteries are 18 volt batteries. I have a ton of Milwaukee batteries. Let's see how this pump pulls on its own, how, what it gets down to. They claim it's rated down to, I think, 15 microns. Um, we're gonna test out to see if this battery will fit in there and work on it. There is this dimple right here that is different and we'll see if it fits on there. Let's find out right now. It's a little stiff, a little tight, but it fit on there. Let's find out if it works. We're gonna put a, my micron gauge on here, see what it pulls down to with nothing else hooked onto it, about how long it takes to. Now I haven't done this yet. No one's gifted me this pump from JB. Milwaukee's not sponsoring me. I have no sponsorships. I have no stake in the game. This is all on me. So I'm gonna test it out, see if it works. And I have not tried this yet. I'll be darned. Son of a biscuit eater, it works. That makes this pump a little bit more valuable to me, in my opinion. So we're down to 83, 63, 48 microns, 37 microns, 28, 22, 17. It pulled down lower than what they said it could do. It is down to four microns. Four microns is pretty good on a vacuum pump. Now granted, brand new, out of the box. You guys are witnessing the first time me using this, so. I'll say that's a win on a 5 CFM pump. I'm gonna talk about some other things with this. So let's go ahead and get it turned off and turn it off. Like I was saying before, has this little power button right here. Hold it down. That's how you turn it off and turn it on. Like I was saying, this battery, the Milwaukee battery is a little stiff to get on and off. And I think it's because of that dimple. Yeah, I can see it rubbing right there. Yep. So it just makes it a little bit stiff to get on and off. I could honestly probably shave that down and this battery would fit in there just fine. This one has this dimple right here, which it fits in this slot right here. Meanwhile, this one kinda has to get past this point right here. But other than that, I mean, let's talk about some other things with this pump. So let's talk about that pump. Is it worth it? Is it not? So I'm gonna put it straight honest as I can. If I was still doing rooftop commercial units, for instance, I had a lot of buildings with 460 volt package units, no outlets on the roof, um, there's no way to do a widow maker on a 460 volt disconnect. Um, instead of stringing out 200 feet of extension cord, that thing would be nice. I did buy a while ago, uh, one of those like battery powered pressure washers that have the bladders. 
I'll do a review on that. I've used it for a while. It works well. Those also come in handy on commercial buildings. But for the everyday use at the retail price, what that pump is, if I were said, hey, $1,100 plus taxes, or I think Johnstone's site had it listed for $998, and then you have your taxes, right? Would I spend my money on it? Not that price point. Did I pay that? Absolutely not. That's the reason why I got it because I got it for way less than that. But once again, like I said, it was a blowout sale they had. This pump's been sitting on the shelf for a while. I decided to pull the trigger and I think it'll be useful in some instances. It's a good pump to have on hand um, in cases of not having power. Like I had a technician today, he was on a roof. I had to bring him another 50 foot extension cord because the only convenience outlet was about 300 feet away it's pretty crappy this pump would have been handy for him and i was actually on my way to get this pump when he called me about that and he's like did you pick that pump up yet and i was like no i haven't um but that would have been handy and it would have worked out uh would i say it's the best thing that i've ever touched like no it's n i won the fact that i put oil in it and walked away and the face leaked half of the oil out kind of upset me a little bit um at the price point if i were to buy that at retail price which would cost me well over a thousand dollars and you can buy a 10 cfm pump from jb for the most part i own three other jb pumps never had an issue with them i they're fully rebuildable i like that they're filled serviceable um i do have a filled piece 8 cfm vacuum pump their first like quick change oil system it's okay, but it's bulky, like I said. It doesn't fit me. Uh, one of my technicians uses it. It's my pump, but he likes it, so I let him use it. Um, this is the first time I've had a JB product that out of the box kind of disappointed me a little bit at first with the oil leaking, but for the most part, it's what I expect from a pump. It is a DC motor, which is nice. It takes my Milwaukee batteries. That's nice, but... For a new technician, I wouldn't say I'd buy it. This is someone that's doing a lot of rooftop equipment, doesn't want to haul up extension cords, doesn't want to utilize widow makers. Sure, get this pump. I would try and find it on sale. I'm not insulting True Tech Tools, but from the most part, I can see they have been the most expensive with this pump, a little over $1,100. Um, the cheapest I've seen it was i think it was a sigler and it was 936 dollars and it's been sitting on their shelf for a while i'm waiting for them to be like yeah we're gonna blow and get this thing out of the walls and sell it for a discounted rate i'll buy another one at that point in time if it was priced around the the five to six hundred dollar mark i probably would buy it it's a good pump at that price mark in my opinion um i really do think that it should come with the ac adapter uh, I, it's kind of disappointing it didn't. Does it work? It works like any other JV pump I've had. I wish I had some of my other JV pumps with me, put them side by side, see how well they each do. Um, but once again, I have my other JV pumps on technicians' trucks because they break their pumps and I let them borrow mine, which is going to start stopping probably soon because I'm getting my tools back broken. And I don't like that. So. Take it for what it is. I am not sponsored by JV. Um, I'm not sponsored by Field Piece. I'm not sponsored by CPS, all these tools that I'm using. Um, these are just things that I've kind of had sitting in my garage. Uh, but I will say it is built solid. It feels like any other JV pump. I wouldn't buy it thinking that it's the next best thing. But if you do a lot of rooftop units, it's a good pump if you can find it at the right price. Even if it was like, after taxes around 760 bucks i'd probably say it's a pretty good deal um the fact that it takes milwaukee batteries is a nice feature um if you guys want to know anything else about it uh let me know and subscribe to the channel like follow i'm trying to get sponsors like i've said to hopefully bring in some stuff all this stuff that I do, guys, is done out of my own pocket or my own time. No one pays for this. 
So if there's something that you want, I'll try and work it in. I'll do a review on that power washer bag that I have and let you guys know and just let me know. Have a good one. Bye.